Oh. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Camille, this is Phoenix, this is Griffin, and you're watching Meal or Husky. If you're new here and you wanna find out more about Huskies or you just like watching cute dogs on the internet, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click that little notification bell so you never have to miss a new video. So quick update before we get into the meat of the video. Just wanted to give you guys an update on Phoenix's surgery. She had TPLO surgery last Thursday and that's why her beautiful leg is completely shaven. And I'll do a, a separate video on like details of that. I know I got a lot of questions about like how much does her surgery cost. Um, but she's doing well. That's the update. She's doing well and she's actually giving me some cuddles right now. I don't know if it's on purpose or if it's by accident because she can't really control like where she sits. She still needs some help getting up but she's been putting some weight on her foot today and that's good news. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> oh my god. We're joining you from the kitchen today. It's not our usual spot, but I didn't want to have to move Phoenix. So I kind of just like made the show around her. I asked you guys to send me some questions on Instagram about Griffith, things you want to know about her. This is best, just like petting two husky heads. Where are you going? This is your show. Phoenix, you sat up by yourself. You did it. So let's get to the questions. The first one was, what inspired her name? Why do we name her Griffin? So if you guys have noticed a theme, I name my dogs after birds of prey, fictional or non-fictional. And most of the time they have some sort of reference to like fantasy novels or movies or whatever. Phoenix is actually named after the Phoenix in Harry Potter, Fox the Phoenix in Harry Potter. And also because she's red and white, Falcon is named Falcon after the Millennium Falcon. I always wanted to name a dog Griffin, so I already had this name in mind before we even met her, but the fact that she's just massive cemented the fact for us. And we spelled it G-R-Y-P-H-O-N because that is actually one of the spellings of Griffin and I just happened to really like it. And it had the P-H and it kind of just like Phoenix as a P-H. So I thought that it would be like a good fit. Mm. Oh. <laughs> All of my dogs have a middle name that correlates with the book or movie or whatever their name is referenced from. So Phoenix's middle name is Felicis, which is from the Harry Potter series. Falcon's middle name was Millennium, obviously after the Millennium Falcon. And Griffin's middle name is Dora, because their name sounds like Gryffindor. So her name is Gryffindora. Okay, so next question. How old is she? So on the paperwork at the SPCA, it said she was three. It's their best guess. She seems like a younger dog. She's absolutely younger than Phoenix. She's definitely more springy and playful and puppy-like, but I don't think she's like only one year old. She's She seems pretty full grown to me. What's wrong? It's really hard to film with dogs. So the next question is, how much does she weigh? For comparison, Phoenix is 50 pounds normally. I think she's a little heavier now because of her knee surgery, so she's not really like getting as much exercise. And Griffin is 60 pounds, and she's kind of on the skinny side right now. It took her a while to like be comfortable eating in her house. She did look a lot like thicker than I imagined because she had been so mad at, I guess like, I don't know, when you're astray, like there's nobody there to brush her hair every day. It took me like four hours the first night and there's still a lot of work to do with her to get her coat to be like Phoenix's. Does she like to cuddle? Yes, absolutely, she loves to cuddle. Usually, as soon as I come home, she will sit for me, lay down, and then immediately give me her belly so that she can get her rubs. Is that right? Is that right? Is that right? Oh, I put lipstick on your face. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'll wipe that off later. Next question, how is she with grooming? She did all right. I gave her a bath and um, I brushed her for four hours. She basically fell asleep. The initial couple minutes, she's annoyed and she's like, why is this brush like near my butt? She didn't growl or do any of that. She kind of just like accepted I'm being brushed right now and then fell asleep in the whole process. So actually she's not bad. And I think probably the best dog for brushing is Phoenix. She will just sit there and take it. I love brushing my dogs, so she's gonna have to deal with it and she has so much more work. Coat blow season right now. 
because summer is coming, but generally she's pretty good. Okay, next question. How is she with Phoenix? She's a little intimidated by Phoenix. It's kind of smart to not have their first meeting be in your house because your current dog, like that's their domain and they could be a little territorial about that. And the other thing was they had the meet without me there in case your current dog would be protective of you or territorial over you. So they just had the meet in a neutral area with two people that they didn't really know. And basically the two of them just like ignored each other and Griffin was kind of just like following Phoenix's lead. Phoenix was moving a little bit slowly at the time. This was before her knee surgery. So Griffin was also moving very slowly. Perching on my leg, I love it. I've seen Phoenix do that this to me like maybe twice. There's like a good dynamic there. She was really confused though when Phoenix came back from the hospital with the sling and then her leg all shaved and like not being able to walk right. Griffin actually like tried to play with her outside. She got in play stance and was like, play! But I was like, oh honey, it's gonna be a couple months before that happens, I'm sorry. How is she with toys and food? Our previous dog, Falcon, she was super protective of food and toys. She had like a really bad case of resource guarding. She would respect Phoenix. She understood she was at the bottom of the totem pole, but if you looked at her food wrong, like she could snap at you. And that's just like a risk with, you know, dogs that maybe didn't have a lot of resources because they were strays or they were abused or whatever. So we didn't know Falcon's backstory either. We knew that she was found like roaming around the streets of Manhattan. So maybe those streets were pretty rough. Griffin on the other hand, I can hardly get her to eat. I've tried higher value food, fancier food, food that's stinky. I've put water in it. I've sprinkled some treats in it and she'll do it, but she always like checks like, is Phoenix eating too? And then she'll eat. You guys, I'm so excited because this one is finally eating. So I would say Griffin is pretty good with food. Honestly, she cares more about where I am in the house than she does about her food. She'll just like leave it unattended and luckily Phoenix is not going to go after it right now, but you just wait, girl. You just wait until she can start walking on her own again and your food's gonna get eaten up. How is she dealing with the separation anxiety? The first day I brought Griffin home, it was a bad idea. I brought her home in the morning and then I had to go to work. So I was there with her for an hour or two and then I left and she lost it. As soon as I walked out the door, she was like, ah, where is she? She started like pawing at the door, eating the door frame. I was checking on her in the camera and she hadn't sat down once for hours. She'd getting into trouble, like pulling treats off the table and like pooping in the other room and it was just really stressful for me and like incredibly stressful for her. This is her journey. There's always something that you find out when you rescue a dog. You don't know their whole backstory. It's really hard to like really uncover all their issues until you bring them home and you try to integrate them into your life. She just didn't know that first day that coming back is a thing that I do. Day two wasn't great. Day three wasn't great either. Um, I got her kennel and she actually broke out of it because I thought like, okay, maybe if she's contained, then she won't uh, damage the house or hurt herself or do any of those crazy things. But she actually got even worse in the kennel. She's super gentle otherwise, but like when she's going nuts, she's super strong and she actually broke all the welds in the kennel and escaped. But I noticed that after she had gotten out of the kennel, she was super chill. Nothing could be worse than being in there. So I'm just gonna relax now. And she just laid down by the front door and took a nap. Today, and I'm really excited to say this and I hope I don't jinx it. So tomorrow we'll see how everything goes. Phoenix, of course, wanted to go in her kennel because she's really happy there. I let her in there and I left the door open. I let Griffin into her kennel too. Each of them have their own special treat. They eat when they're in their kennel. It was a tip from our dog trainer friend, Jess. So thank you, Jess. And then I kind of left the house. I had been trying to desensitize her to the sound of like me opening the front door. So this time she didn't even notice. And I walked out of the house and eventually when she finished her treat, I was watching her on the camera. She walked out of her kennel, looked at the front door, walked around and then was like, oh, well, I guess I'll just wait for her to come back. And she laid on the couch for most of the day. I'm so proud of you. Guess what? I came home today and nothing was destroyed. And you even sat here and played with the toy. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. She did a great job. She didn't break the house. And she just like sat around relaxed all day. I think it was extra bad because 
Um, Thursday and Friday, Phoenix was at the hospital, so Griffin had nobody in the house with her. So now that Phoenix is back and I don't lock the kennel, I just leave it open and she can go in and out as she pleases. She's super happy and uh, hopefully tomorrow's another good day. We had one good day and you can do it again tomorrow. I'm gonna be so proud of you. I don't care what you do, I'm gonna be proud of you. And that's the update. Oh, are you tired? Is this tiring for you? So what we do is we turn the lights on and I know they're really bright. Probably they make some weird noise that I can't hear but you can hear. But we sit here and we talk to the camera and our friends, we tell them stuff. Griffin Dora laying on the floor. Okay, bye. All right, we can do the outro with you, okay? Because I love you. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe to our channel. I post new things every Wednesday. You can tap on that little circle with my face in it to subscribe. If you wanna see my last video, you can go here. And if you wanna check out our vlog channel, you can go down there. And now that we're at the end of this video, it's time for it. This is a pillow. Are you my pillow? All right, it's been real. See you guys next week. Bye.